Hello, my name is Mike Benson, and I'm an HVAC, that's Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning instructor at MetroTech. And we are presently in my shop. The purpose of this presentation this evening is for me to help, I hope, homeowners, primarily homeowners like myself and you, identify how to prepare not only your heating system, but your home for the heating season. Uh, we need to ask ourselves, what are we trying to accomplish when we're preparing this system in our home for the heating season? What can we do? What, what action items can we take? In the summertime, we're moving heat out of this building or out of this enclosure. In the wintertime, we are trying to keep heat in this building, okay? We're trying to keep heat from escaping this building. Okay, uh, so we need to minimize the amount of heat that is escaping from our home. Where does it escape? It escapes through the, through the windows, through the doors, through the walls, through the ceiling, tremendous amount escaping through the ceiling, through cracks and crevices around our doors and our walls. So what are some action items that you can take in that area. You can repair or replace weather stripping and caulking around your doors and windows. You would be surprised at how much heat is lost through those openings. If you don't have time to do everything, the whole home, concentrate right now on the north side of your home. Any openings on the north side, make sure the weather stripping and the caulking is, is good on, in that area. Another area, another action item you can take is to make sure that you have a sufficient amount of insulation in your attic because a tremendous amount of heat is lost up through your ceiling, through the insulation, into that cold attic. We do what's called load calculations in determining how much heat you need and a lot is lost and has to be made up through the ceiling. So. Check and see if it's possible. Go up if you can. Sometimes it's difficult. Go up in the attic and see, do you have insulation for one? And if you do, how much is up there? Maybe even take a little ruler and see. Maybe you have three, four, five, six inches. Well, now homes are putting in a home builders are putting in a tremendous amount of insulation in the attic. It could be 12, 14, 15, 18 inches of insulation. So if you feel like you need more insulation, get with an insulation contractor, get a price, and he can also help you determine how long it'll take you to get your money back on that additional insulation. My estimate is it would just be a few heating seasons. And bear in mind, that same insulation is gonna help during your cooling season. That same caulking, and, and weather stripping is gonna help during your cooling season. Because remember, in the summer, we're trying to get, keep heat from entering our building. And in the winter, we're trying to keep heat from leaving our building. So prepare your enclosure or your home first. Take care of that first. And, and of course, there are a lot more elaborate ways. Storm windows, thermal pane windows, but that's pretty expensive. So. First action item, I am take care of the enclosure that your heating system is going to have to take care of. Once we have determined we have done all of this, that we are slowing down the amount of heat that is leaving your home, and this is geared primarily to homes, what next? Then we look at our heating system. What can the homeowner do with their heating system? Well, not much, but there are some things. I really don't want to recommend to a homeowner to attempt to service your furnace. Uh, just don't do that. What I recommend is, first of all, you know, where, where your furnace is located, you may not know. It could be in an enclosure, in a closet in your home. It could be in the garage. It could be in an attic. But attempt to find out where your furnace is located. If 
for your information, you may want to know, is it electric or is it gas? Is it an upflow or is it a downflow? Or is it a horizontal? Okay, if it's an upflow, which are in many homes now, it flows upward, like the furnaces behind me. They flow upward, and the air comes out of your ceiling. Okay, if it's a downflow, naturally it flows down, and it comes out of diffusers on the floor. Learn a little bit about your system. But once you learn where that system is, I'm recommending you make sure that the area around the furnace is clear. It's not a storage area for Halloween items, Christmas, Easter. It's not a storage area. Uh, it needs to be clear around the furnace for a couple of reasons. One, these furnaces need combustion air. A tremendous amount of air has to enter this area right here and support the, the, the fire or the combustion. If you restrict the air entering that area, the fire will go to find its own oxygen. It will attempt to come out. Now, on some of the newer furnaces, that's not possible. It's got a sealed combustion chamber and that won't occur. But there are very few of these newer high efficiency furnaces. Most of what we have in Oklahoma City and around the country are the standard 80% furnaces, as you see here. And we don't want that fire going out looking for air. We want it to have air freely. Plus, it is a code that you have sufficient room around that furnace in order to service it. And it would be nice if you had sufficient lighting around there where you can do a good visual inspection and a service company can get to it. The next thing I'd like to go over is the airflow for a furnace. And this also applies to your air conditioning. Many of you have probably said, this back bedroom has never had enough air. This, this add-on room we put on never had enough air. That is very common. You must have good airflow across a furnace. That's how we transfer the heat. All the air in that furnace will be going across a heat exchanger similar to this. The heat enters the heat exchanger here, heats up these tubes, and the air from your home goes across this. Now what happens if there's not enough air going across that? One, the furnace could run too hot. That, that's not good, okay? We don't want it running too hot. The other, it could run too long. Why do we not want it to run too long? It's going to cost you more. Your bill is going to go up. Now, what would prevent it from getting enough air across it? Well, lots of things. The first one we all think about is filters. How often do we change the filters? If in doubt, do it every three months, okay? The filters, your filters may be in the unit. Your filters may be in a return air grill in the ceiling or on the wall. Find out where your filters are and change those filters. The filter you should select is a pleated filter. Pay a little more for that filter. Uh, you know, for a long time, we've seen just the standard fiberglass filters. Use a pleated filter, pleated. Those pleated filters filter out finer material, plus when you stretch that pleat out, you have more surface area. So spend a little more on that filter.